Good morning, day five. We're on a real roll here, right? So to just kind of hop into things, the topic I want to talk about today is, I don't want to say taboo, but it's completely unproven and there's nothing to back it up with. It's just this thought that I had, like I legit, so about two, three years ago, I woke up in the middle of the night, like from a dead ass sleep, we're talking three, four o'clock in the morning. And I was like, oh my God, what if this is the answer? And I jotted it down and I just, I don't know, I sent it as an email to myself and didn't think anything of it until yesterday when I was like, hey, you know what, this would be a really good topic for a video. And so then I found the old email that I sent myself and I was looking it over and I was like, okay. I was like, but I'm definitely going to need to make sure to mention that there's no evidence of this. This is just from my own fucking messed up middle of the night brain. But before I do that, I want to do something that's at least like tangible, that is known to be helpful, right? Like, so it's not just all, I don't know, wish wash that Miranda has to say, right? So the thing I want to talk about first is a grounding technique. So this can be used for anxiety symptoms. This could be used how I use it for work with my people is during that period of a physical craving. Physical cravings last 10 to 15 minutes. They are very physical. Your heart beats faster. You're feeling sweaty, maybe a little nauseous, a little sick, a little excited. It's a noticeable feeling. It's measurable. So how to get through that, right? We use grounding techniques. So the first thing you're going to do is, and it's to keep yourself in the moment, to pull yourself out of the depths of your own head. You don't want to go down that rabbit hole. So the first thing you're going to do is look around the room, name five things that you can see. Name four things that you can touch. Name three things that you can hear. Two things that you can smell and one thing that you can taste. And doing this, it, it distracts your mind enough to kind of be in the moment. It helps get through that initial period of trying to let the physical part of it go away, right? So just a little, I don't know, couple minute exercise that may or may not help um, pull you out of the moment you're in if needed. So the topic that I want to talk about today that I said, you know, absolutely no basis behind this other than my own thoughts is falling in love, falling in love as a treatment for addiction. So if somebody is struggling with a substance and they decide to stop using, a lot of times what doesn't get acknowledged or brought up is the sense of loss that comes with it. Our use has typically been a really big part of our lives, right? Like it's taken up a lot of our time, our thoughts, our energy. It almost becomes like its own relationship. So what people don't realize is when you get rid of it, you're losing a piece of yourself. Like we already talked about the shit in our brains already feeling messed up, right? Like we're not producing the happy juices. So we're already not feeling good while our brain is healing. But even more so than that, it's like we've lost something. Like we're almost in mourning maybe. Um, and that's okay. Because it is a lot like a relationship, what we had with our addiction. It filled some void. It served some purpose for us. So when it's not there anymore, it makes sense that we're just kind of left feeling empty about it, right? So the hypothesis that I was thinking of, um, one random night, seriously, like dead ass sleep, woke up and I was like, falling in love. Have you ever fallen in love before? That shit hijacks every fucking part of you, right? Your brain is only focused on that person. All you can think about, you're making so much fucking happy juice. It's coming out of your ears. People are absolutely disgusted by you because you're just glowing, right? Like it physically changes us. It's to me and the theory is that it's the exact opposite of what you're going through. If you've stopped using, if you're experiencing that anhedonia, if you know, you're feeling empty or like you're going through a loss. So what is the opposite of void is like filling, right? So filling ourselves with love. I know. And that's what makes it so taboo is there's so many treatment centers that are like, no, you shouldn't be in a relationship for at least one year of sobriety. You need to use this time to focus on you. And 
I kind of challenge that with people have a really hard fucking time focusing on themselves. It is so hard to look inward. And I'm not saying not to ever do it, but maybe not do it in that first initial few months where we're physically and emotionally just trying to be fucking okay. I am not saying that this is a cure all fix all by any means. I'm merely suggesting that something like falling in love would be a good almost band-aid to get you through those first few months that are so hard, that feel so bad, that you know, you put yourself out there, you connect to another human. So it falls in line with everything else that we've already talked about. Another option this girl has made clear, get an animal. And that goes along the same idea of like, you're not supposed to even have a plant in the first few months of sobriety, like show that you can take care of yourself first kind of thing. But having something living there with you can make all of the difference. It can make us feel connected. Right. And that's what we need is that connection to a crazy animal, another person, something that we feel recognized or seen or wanted or needed. Um, that sense of purpose. Right. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Is it an answer? I've never put it to the test, so I'm not sure. It just seems to make sense to me. Fill it with love. Right. At least temporarily. I mean, whatever we need to do to feel less like shit, right? That's the whole overarching goal. No matter what our end goal is, what we're trying to achieve, the overarching idea behind all of it is to feel less like shit. So if meeting somebody, connecting with somebody, falling in love can help fix some of that, if we look at it strictly from a brain aspect, then sure, that idea can hold water and maybe it does help for somebody. But again, just an idea. You'd also, like I said, this is not a one-all fix-all. After a few months, after you're kind of more comfortable in your sobriety, after you've let go of some of those feelings of loss, maybe then you're in a better spot to look inward, right? Maybe then you're in a better spot to focus on yourself and start digging into some of that deeper stuff. And Maybe it's a little bit easier to do so with a clear brain, a clear mind, not going through the withdrawal symptoms, not being in that early recovery stage, just being in a little kind of longer term recovery. So just a thought. See you tomorrow.